when I when I finished playing or when I stopped playing, um, I went on to set up my own business, do other things that didn't have nothing to do with football, um, and it just wasn't satisfaction for me. It wasn't satisfaction for me. So I wanted to come back into football, and I didn't know what to do. I knew I couldn't obviously couldn't play. There's loads of different areas you can go into, but um, I've always liked coaching kids and developing players anyway, even when I was playing. Um, so I tried that, went and did my level one, um, started to coach kids under six, started to enjoy that a bit more. Went up again, did my level two, um, started to coach older kids, and then just found out I really started to enjoy it again. Um, then I went into uni to get a bit more understanding you know, about the game and just the psychological part of it and the uh, social part of it. So I did that to it and I just carried on from there. I've done all different type of courses from the disability courses to down to um, what's called down to all my youth, youth badges. It's all different ones really, to be fair. And you, have you had a, would you say, a positive experience on the whole? Yes, I have actually. Um, I think their phase, I think especially with their youth courses, they've really stepped it up because they've now gone out around the world and looked how other FAs are doing things. And I think they've now just brought it back and added to what they're doing and making it a more, you know, inclusive process now. So yeah, I, I, am, enjoy, I, am, I am enjoying their FA courses. Um, I would like to say it is improving from when I started. Um, when, I, when I started, when I went into the journey and I explained to my mentor and a few um, coaches that's been in, been in the game for a long time, they said to me, it's going to be very, very difficult. And I found that very upsetting because I thought people would be judging you based on, you know, your ability to do your job, not obviously the colour of your skin or, or sex or whatever. Um, but I still, I'm a very determined person anyway, so I still went, tried to go for it anyway. But what I found through the journey was that a lot of people that was in front of me um, complained about the same thing, like complained about being overlooked um, for somebody else that was suited to the role. Um, and I found that in every single area I've been in, when I was, at, um, when I was working at Chelsea, it was the same thing. Um, not at Chelsea, but I'm just saying at that level, you know. Um, when I was doing the development down there, when I've worked at you know other pro clubs and stuff like that, I've heard the same things coming through the academies. You know that's been very difficult for even physios down to other people, not only coaches and players, but you know the physios, the other people that do other things in the club is very difficult to you know get to that next level. And a lot of them did feel it had something to do with either their sex or or their colour. Um, I feel with the with, this, with the new scheme that the FA is trying to do and trying to give at least people of colour and different sexes, um, the opportunity to even be interviewed, I think that's a, that's a step. But I, I do generally think it's a society thing, it's not only just in football, it is a general society thing. Um, but I do think it is an opportunity that, at least if someone can have the opportunity to get interviewed, then, you know, it is, it is a start. Yeah, so with my journey, I've, um, as I said before, I've, I've started with grassroots coaches coaches that had been in the game for like 20 years at that level and I learned because I, I think it's so important to learn from a grassroots level so you, cause you're, you're, you're coming up with the kids when they start their journey um, you're learning as a coach um, and then you're moving up then I went from there into um, non-league football um, just local teams from there I went on to I got an opportunity to um, coach at AFC Wimbledon just they brought me in to do some skill sessions and from there, that went on for like around six months. Um, got an opportunity to go and work at Chelsea, doing their foundation um, sessions and stuff like that. Which it was, it was, it was really positive at Chelsea because with them, they set up in a way where the development coaches, the foundation coaches, could every single week, like it, you'd have a day specifically for you, um, and you'd go out and you would um, shadow one of the academy coaches. Um, obviously, that's the level you're trying to get to you'd um, shadow one of the academy coaches and sometimes we were able to even go and watch the first team um, train. So that helped me a lot. But I think from that period, I knew it was going to take me really long to get to where I wanted to get to because I didn't have a name, I didn't have the experience, I didn't, I've never played professional football. And I saw a lot of 
ex-pro players coming in and going in front of people at my level. So that's when I now said to myself, OK, let me come down to like a non-league team like Tuna Mitchum that would give you the opportunity to make your name and let's go up from there. So I started off here doing the under-18s and the under-21s. 20, um, we were quite successful the first year. We now moved on to under-23s, um, did that. Um, we won the league, got a lot of success like winning things. Um, got a lot of players off the street to come and play football. Um, and for us, success is not only about obviously getting players off playing football. Our success is them doing something. So a lot of them went in doing apprenticeship through us. A lot of them went off to, to uni, college, um, playing football at some sort of level, um, just doing something with themselves. Um, that was seen as a success. So I was really successful with that in the past three years. Um, and then got opportunities, obviously, take on the first team. And that was done by, because we had so much success with the youth. Yeah, I would, I would say that because at the end of the day, there's a clear pathway for everyone to, to get into it. At the end of the day, um, how the FA set it up now is you, you're still going to do your courses just like anybody else. Um, and when a job role comes up, you should now have the opportunity to at least get interviewed. doesn't say you're going to get the job because I don't think anybody will want to be just pushed through for a job because of their sex or, or colour. Um, but yeah, I think there's, there, is a, there, there is a pathway and I think now in clubs you're seeing more um, cultures of colour or sex now getting some sort of opportunity. Like you see at two in here, um, our, our coaching staff is completely mixed. You know, um, different sex, different age, um, different colours, different backgrounds. You know, we're getting people in that's going to just literally do the job. And it is something that I think players will look at now and say, OK, when I finish football, there is opportunity for me. You know, I just think obviously it is disheartening when you come in a field like you see today, like um, the amount of black or Asian players that's going to be on the field today. And you're wondering why that can't that be replicated off the field. Whatever we've got to do with the, with the football club, why is it not the same like that? Yeah. I, I would say don't let the, what's out there stop you. You know, for me, I, I just went for it. You know, I, I made sure I had all my qualifications. I made sure I had all the experience. Then there's no excuse. Then it's literally, you know, is this person sitting next to me better than me? You know, that's why when I went on the pathway of getting to where I am now, I said to myself, I'm going to get all my qualifications. I'm going to even get extra what another coach wouldn't have. So me going in and doing my degree for three years, that was another reason that I wanted to learn and be more advanced than the next person. Um, secondly, I came and even when I came to Tooting, I used to, even when I wasn't a manager, I used to follow the first team everywhere, learning. Um, even when they went far, I would like, I would travel with them, learning, seeing what the people in front of me were doing, just, you know, just to get that experience. And just, if I did go for a job, they would say, okay, he has got experience sitting on the bench. He has got experience being around. He has got experience um, coaching, learning, you know. So for me, have all the necessary weapons. I, for me, I think two things, I think education, I think that's a big thing. I think a lot of people are not educated. When I mean educated, I'm not talking about going to school and stuff like that. I'm talking about it just in life. You've got people that are in areas where they probably don't see, you know, people of colour or, or seeing women doing a lot of things. Um, I think um, society as well, you know, there's still a lot of areas that still... When I say areas, it could even be just individuals that are still... People could say, you could say backwards. You know, and I just think it, it, it's a society thing as well, and education, that's the two main things I think it is. And I think when we start educating people, you know, that's the only how it's going to get better, you know. Um, there's places you, 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 like, give you an example, when I went to go and play football in Romania, they hadn't, some people hadn't even seen a black person before. So, you know, it's, it's how society is and people just being educated, to be fair. Hundred percent, hundred percent. There was a there was a, um, a solution one of the pro players suggested. He was saying something about um, instead of you making it so easy to get an account, that you should make it very difficult. So, give an example: when you want to set up one account, you have to use your passport details or your driving license. Something that's got something that's um, connected to you. 
So at least if someone is using your name or whatever, it'll be alerted straight away. And at least if someone is like being racist or being abusive or being whatever, it's easily dictated and that person can be, you know, prosecuted or whatever. And then at least it's not going to stop it, but it will reduce it. It's not so easy. Because I feel like on, on with social media, it's just like someone walking up to somebody and being sexist to them, getting away with it. Yeah, I can do whatever I want. Um, whereas in society, you can't actually do that. You know, it's a bit difficult to do it. Social media, easy. I can see something I don't like. Might not say it in the stands, but I'll just go home and I'll just blur it out, private private account, no picture, no nothing, can't get back to me. So I do, I do think they can easily do something about it. They, they, they set up themselves to make money very easy, but they don't set it up to protect the people that they, that's using their, their formats there. Yeah.